Right folks, so finally after two days getting around to do the bevels video. So again, I have my blade shape ready. What I did is I actually just draw a nice thick line with the magic marker down the center and now I'm gonna scribe it with my scribe and uh, the line with the magic marker just ma gives me a little bit of contrast to see the line So now you can see that center line, the scribe line, a little better because you have the dark contrast from the magic marker. So here we go. Mask. Again, 50 grit, brand new belt. And uh, we're just gonna fast forward it a bit.
I'm gonna put a new belt. I'm gonna put a new belt and a backing. I'm just gonna clean it with a 120 grit belt now. Now I'll just clean the grind and the handle and everything, all the rust from it uh, with the scotch bright belt, this I think medium.
as you see, <coughs> grind is done. After every, everything is done, I always blast it with WD-40 just to prevent rusting, you know, especially on these tool steels. But uh, did a nice full high convex. You could see it. The only flat is actually here, where is the highest highest portion. That little flat here, but that's gonna actually get that little switch for switch. So that's gonna be pretty sweet, I think. And uh, grind came out pretty nice. You see that it it actually comes all together all the way towards the end because it's all crooked and like weird looking as you grind it because you can never hold it when you do it freehand like I do you can never hold it perfectly but the, the further and further to the finish you cl uh, closer and closer you get to the finish uh, the, that flat will give you that guide that's why I keep saying when you have once you have flat or, or hollow grind once, once you have something that will hold your hands that will hold the truck it gets easier and easier that's why the jigs and hollow grinds are easier because the the shape of the grind actually keeps the blade in place you know automatically so that's why on the beginning when you're just grinding a narrow surface it wiggles a lot a lot but deeper and deeper you go the closer to the flat to the perfect flat you're getting the easier it is because it just holds its own place and then once you convex it the, you, you see always you know you see that's why it's always nice that you get that little rust when you're working with it because it's like a, it's like when you know when you're sharpening something and you put the magic marker line to see where your contact is it's doing the, essentially the same thing you have rust flat and you start convexing it whatever you already convex it's gonna be nice and ground whatever you didn't touch yet uh, it's still rusty that's why you see like when you get sometimes on these curves and you need to copy the shape of the curve it, uh, it's a nice nice helper to see the rust there as you go and it gives you an idea like which which areas you you, you pass already and which areas good and which aren't so it's kind of like a nice helper it's pretty good uh, the plunge line is pretty nice it's not perfect but it's you can see it there it's pretty nice like a relieved plunge line here also I just this is just from scotch break but it is about the same like radius like here I'm gonna try to get the once it's done after the heat treat. I'll try to get that edge all the way from here. You know, maybe maybe quarter inch away from your index finger if you were in this like kind of like a choke up position. But so far it looks good. Next step will be I'll show you how I drill the holes in the tank. So I hope you enjoyed, guys. Thank you for watching. Take care. Stay safe. And remember, don't cut yourself.